All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to St. Louis Hustle, guys. This is our first ever episode of our podcast. Super excited. I'm Cortez Hustle. That is Michelle A. And we are chilling out with Ariel Bivens Biggs over here, founder and CEO of Young Biz Kids. She's teaching entrepreneurship and financial literacy to our babies. So let me have Ariel introduce herself. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Ariel, and what made you start Young Biz Kids? Yes. So I am a mom. I'm a wife. I am um, just a community mom. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like everybody's mom. But uh, basically, I'm an author, an entrepreneur, and also a leader within the community. I'm a social entrepreneur. I like to build, make that impact to change others' lives. Um, what made me start Young Biz Kids that my, my son, which was seven at the time, uh, talked a lot about entrepreneurship and wanted to start his own business. And um, I started speaking to that child that was in me, it threw him. So when he started to tell me, after I told him no a couple times, but after he started to tell me more why he should have his own business, I started to support him in doing that support. He um, ran a lemonade stand with his best friend, and parents kept asking me, how did I get him to understand how to run business? And I was telling them ways that I taught him. We started with six kids and quickly grew to 30 kids. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, go ahead, Michelle. Wow. So, so you, you mentioned that, you know, he, you know, he, he told you, mom, I want to start a business. You know, most kids just wake up and, and won't serve early in the morning on Saturday morning. They won't lay those for Christmas. Your kids wants to start a Fortune 500. You know, where did that seed come from? Like, what was it that he wanted that planted that seed for him wanting a, a, a business? Um, it was because uh, he wanted something out the vending machine, and he's always asking for something. And so I tell him, I, I'm, no, you always want something. Can I have, can I have? And I'm like, no. And I'm, that person, I said, you know, that money that you put into those machines goes to the owner. Somebody owns those machines. And then a little bit later, by the time we got in the car, he was like, well, I want to own vending machines. And I laughed, and I'm like, boy, you can't own vending machines, but <laughs> Who does wrong that he can own vending machines? So right now he's 12 years old, owns 12 vending machines. And if you Google the youngest vending machine owner in the United States. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Wow, he's 12 in business. He's a business owner, diversifying his funds and everything. <laughs> Good. That's okay. I'm supposed to get along. I'm just saying. Awesome. <laughs> Hey, listen, I know you guys recently just kicked off your major uh, uh, launch for 2020. Uh, you guys are celebrating five years, right, this year? Yeah. So yeah. what do you have in store for the babies in 2020? So we have our big gala that's coming up at the end of the year. October is November. Um, and it's going to bring awareness to youth entrepreneurship. St. Louis has a lot of young entrepreneurs, a lot of kids that's dabbling in entrepreneurship and starting and running businesses. So we uh, plan on doing a gallon to bring that awareness. But then also we have our monthly classes where we um, are always looking for volunteers mm -hmm. and to help mentor these children and to help put them on the right path and be that person in their lives that we didn't have as far as entrepreneurship. So when we were growing up, we didn't have anybody that can tell us about entrepreneurship. But we have so many adult entrepreneurs in St. Louis that can pour into these babies. We just really, really are looking for uh, bridging that gap between the young entrepreneurs and the adult entrepreneurs. Awesome. And then we have some pitch competitions that we're going to train them on. We're going to train them really well on media and how to handle media. And then we're going to train them on how to... Um, position themselves to have more than one stream of income off of the one thing that they do. Mm -hmm. And then the final thing that we're going to uh, do is mental health. We want to make sure that if we add that mental health component into entrepreneurship, because as entrepreneurs, we know that it's ups and downs and different things that happen. And we want to make sure that we're training them on how to deal with those things and how to uh, recognize certain stressors within their lives and have coping tools to deal with those things. Awesome, awesome. And as a serious uh, advocate of mental health, uh, I think that is very, very commendable. 
uh, because if you think about it, you guys are not just helping the young entrepreneur, you're helping the entire child. They're learning yeah. money at a, a young age. They're learning business at a young age. Now you're telling me that because of what they're going to go through as young developing entrepreneurs, that's going to bring a certain amount of added stress. And you guys want to help them learn how to uh, adequately deal with that. I think that is amazing. Uh, go ahead and jump in, Michelle. I know you got some things that you want to talk about. So, um, well, I had a question. My question, Cortez, Ariel. So what is your, what's your youngest biz kid age and what's your oldest right now? So, and then Okay, so right now we do seven to high school 18 as a group. My youngest is actually five now because she's my daughter. She's not an official young biz kid, but she's a young biz kid because my, my daughter owns a, um, a gumball machine business. So the quarter candy machines, we wanted to give her vending machines also because she had the entrepreneur bug at three years old. So we gave her the vending, the candy vending machine so that she could have something of ownership of hers that belongs to her and that she can make her own money. So if you ask my, at the time, three-year-old, what are you doing with your money? She's like, well, after I make it, I'm taking it to the bank and I'm saving it for later so that I can buy something that I want. So she was understanding that concept at an early age. But it's the environment of our home also that that's the environment where we're an entrepreneurial home. That's that's awesome. It's it's so great to to start them there. You know, the Bible say train up the child in the way they should go. When they get older, they Same shall way. not depart from that thing. Yeah. That's a whole nother thing. Um, I wanted to talk. I wanted you to talk a little bit. You know that you know that was gonna creep on out. They say what well, senior gonna come out, and then we just wait for that to just pop out. Um. <laughs> I wanted you to uh, maybe talk a little bit about some of the strategies that you use when dealing with some of the younger children. How do you keep the the attention of some of your younger children? Now, Shelly loves kids, but you know, children is sometimes the high energy. How do you keep the um, the attention of some of the younger kids? What are some of the strategies that you use in um, teaching um, uh, the entrepreneurship? You know, that the curriculum for them. Yeah, so making sure that the um, teacher or the facilitator is high energy that has that um, really understands how to work with children. And then the other thing is the kid has to want it too, because we try to make the environment as fun as possible for them. But we also know that it's a seriousness to what we're doing. We try not to make it classroom style. And yeah. get them free and yell and things like that. But we also want them to know that it's not this is not, I'm going to say child's play, like what you're embarking on is something serious that can set you up for your future if you follow these strategic steps. Awesome, so, awesome. Uh, hold on, hold that thought, Michelle, because we got to go pay some bills. Uh, but when we come back, we're going to let Michelle keep going with that line of questioning because she's become Miss Michelle, Attorney Michelle, interrogation uh, going on here. So. Uh, give us a second, guys. We'll be right back with more St. Louis Hustle podcast. And Ariel is going to tell us more about how she's working with not only with the kids, but she did a special project with the parents, too. So we'll get into that when we come back. I have done two prior Young Jeb Better Health Now challenges. I decided this time around I needed an extra push. A good thing to remember is 32 pounds is the weight of my three and a half year old son. And I am not carrying around a a three and a half year old basically. I'm a mother of four. I just wanna wanna see how healthy I can get so that I can be around for a while. It's pretty amazing whenever you're excited to get on the scales every morning and see what the numbers are instead of dreading it. When I went to convention last year, the day of the 5K, when this lady Merle came across the finish line, it, she was visually impaired, she was blind. From this day forth, I said, I'm, I'm changing my lifestyle. I'm just going to be a whole new me. I was out of control. I really let myself go. And I thought, okay, who loses 12 pounds in a week? I'm like, this is such a joke. But it happened, and it happened again, and again, and again. Anybody can do this. If I can do it, you can do it. Leading up to today has been a whirlwind, but I feel amazing. Everybody makes you feel really awesome when you come here, too. So it just kind of like heightens your excitement about everything. 
I feel so much better. If I could help just one person be able to do that for their life, then it'd be worth it all. I feel amazing. I can't believe how far I've came from last year to this year. I have kept my weight off within two to five pounds, which is a complete miracle. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our first ever episode of St. Louis Hustle Podcast. I'm Cortez Hustle. She's Michelle A. And she is Ariel Bivens Biggs. We're talking teaching entrepreneurship and money to kids. So go ahead, uh, Michelle. I know you wanted to ask uh, Ariel something before we jump out to break. We, I'm, I'm so sorry. I just got so into it. I'm just going, you know, my kids long, so I'm going to go out here and find me some kids and we're going to make some money. Um, but so I wanted to, when we left off, I think my last question, follow-up question was, um, all that you were saying about, you know, getting the kids and making sure, you know, that they understand some of those fundamentals, even when they're young. I guess the other side of that is making sure that it, that the kid, um, that kid has that natural, um, that the, the natural entrepreneurial, the nuance is there and that is in the kid and it's not the parent that's dragging them there saying, oh, my kid has it and they really don't. I'm sure that that may be sometimes my present itself as well. <laughs> yeah, it does. But before I answer that, I want to go back to when you were talking about training up a child. When uh -huh. I was three years old, my son, Mikey, when he was three years old, he told me train up a child. He, well, he oh. said Proverbs 22 and 6. And he was saying, <laughs> rest on me. And I was like, what is Proverbs 20, 26? So I grabbed the Bible, I opened it, and I said, train up a child. And he looked up at me and he said, in a way I should go. And when I get older, I won't depart. And then he went back to playing with his wrestling men. So I was like, hmm, that stuck with me. So when I was telling him no about entrepreneurship, it hit and rang a bell with me that when we train up a child, it's not only in just a certain thing or in the word of God, it's in natural life. So if he's showing... Yeah in entrepreneurship i need to train him up in entrepreneurship so that he can be everything that god purposed him to be that's it that is so it you know what too and i'm gonna say this and you know what here's how it just comes together i put this shirt on a friend of mine made this shirt but i'm gonna just say this about your baby his faith secured the bag at yeah. young yeah yes. i agree Absolutely. just right off and, and i look at the then you see what it is Okay, I'm But I'm gonna go back to your other question. You know, it sometimes it can seem like dragging a kid to be an entrepreneur. That's yeah. why I, I distinguish the difference between the business owner and the entrepreneur. I yeah. believe that our all kids are entrepreneurial, which that just means that they're natural born problem solvers. So if you put something in front of them, you will help them to process through on how to get to the, the desired end result. So when you do that, you're showing them how to communicate in life, how to get through certain situations in life and how to cope with certain things in life by just being a simple problem solver. So I believe even if you are dragging your kid to the class, not necessarily starting a business, but getting those skills that you learn from that. Because I'll be honest, every Saturday morning, kids don't want to get up and go to a class, you know, but the skill sets that they can learn by going through that class and some things they'll never would have been introduced to if they wouldn't be at that class, it's worth dragging your kids there. Now, to put them full-blown in business, I don't think parents should do that. To start an LLC for the kid, do it before uh -huh. the kid's ready, because kids change their mind, and they might like basketball today, and now they like football, now they want to dance, yeah. now they want to do now they want to go ride a bicycle upside down under the water, you know? So they just have all of these amazing, crazy ideas that pop in their head. And I believe entrepreneurship gives you that platform to let them experiment and go through the process. Do you really like this? Because ultimately the process is do a business plan, do your market research. Now come yeah. back to me and tell me how this is going to make you money or how this is going to impact the community. Those steps would allow you to see if this kid really wants to do that thing because they'll put in the work. And if they're not putting in the work, that lets you as a parent know that, you know what, they really are not into this like I thought. Yeah, well, that's amazing. And it's good, you know, be in tune with your child, uh, but also give them a chance. Don't, don't let them say, I don't feel like going today and that's the end of entrepreneurship for the rest of their life. Yeah. 
because they yeah. don't always not feel like doing something. So yeah, sometimes they need that added push. Uh, tell me, Ariel, what are some of the things that maybe some of the parents are getting out of young biz kids that not even you expected to, to happen with the parents? Because I know you can't raise a young entrepreneur. You can't help them in their business without learning a thing or two yourself as a parent. Yeah. 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 So the parents are being inspired to start businesses and start uh, inspired to get their credit scores up over 700, inspired to buy new homes buy new cars and looking at interest rates, like they're having conversations that they normally wouldn't have had. So that was a big thing that I didn't expect. And then on the flip side, well, not even on the flip side, but on like digging more deep into it. Um, as moms, you know, you, uh, you kind of lose yourself. You're doing everything for your kids. I didn't realize that so many moms felt the way that I felt far as I'm giving everything that I got to my kids and what do I want my legacy to be that she gave so much to her kids, but what did she do for herself? So a group of the moms got together and we wrote a book together called Hashtag Mom Boss. And we all talk about how we raise our entrepreneurial kids, but how we use entrepreneurship as a parenting tool to build a strong relationship and communicate mm -hmm. with our kids through the things that they uh, love to do. So we were able to become number one best-selling authors in several categories. We were able to uh, hit hot new release, and we were all able to make additional income off of uh, writing this book. So it, it was just an amazing thing to see them transform in, from just being moms to actually become entrepreneurs with right alongside their kid. And my belief is you can't tell a kid what to do if they don't see you doing it, you know, so when they see you do it, it just encourages them more, and then you have, you're able to understand and relate to those kids more, because honestly, Mikey was out there selling books, and he was, he was really doing a good job on selling books, but I didn't realize how tiring it was to sell books, sign books, take a picture with a person and keep the same facial expression for three right. or four hours. I didn't realize that that was so it's a whole job. When you're done, you're sweating, you're tired, you're exhausted. So it helped yeah. me to understand what it felt like for him to yeah. really sell books and be an author. Awesome, yeah. awesome, awesome. Well, when we come back, Ariel is going to tell us how you can get that young entrepreneurial guide for your child. Also, how you can become a part of the program, all the other things they got going on. Because guess what? She found it in St. Louis, but she's taking this thing online so you can be anywhere in the world and be a young biz kid. So we'll be right yeah. back. Yes. Kim, what's up, St. Louis? Let me ask you a serious question. If I saw $20 about to fall out of your pocket, you want me to tell you, right? Well, the fact of the matter is, I see three to $600 per month falling out of your paycheck every month. So guess what? This is me telling you. For those of you who do not know me, my name is H. Cortez, wealth strategist, author, and I'm on a mission to empower our community economically through financial education. See, over the last five years, I've been fortunate enough to be trained and coached by some multimillionaires. And you know what I learned? Is that there's only four things that we have to overcome if we ever plan to build generational wealth. You have to overcome taxes, you have to overcome debt, we have to overcome our credit woes, and we have to overcome our lack of asset accumulation. But if we stop the bleeding by overpaying taxes three to six hundred dollars per month, and that's not me saying that, that comes straight from the IRS. So if you want to know if you're one of the 80 million people that's overpaying taxes, all I want you to do is go over to payraise.com wealthcreationplaybook.com, watch a short video, answer seven questions, and you can find out if you're overpaying taxes, but more importantly, you'll find out what you can do to stop the bleeding. Payraise.wealthcreationplaybook.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the first ever episode of the St. Louis Hustle podcast. I'm Cortez Hustle. She's Michelle A. She's hey. Ariel Pivens Biggs. We're talking teaching entrepreneurship and financial literacy to kids. Ariel is doing a wonderful job with this program. I know you wanted to ask her one more thing before we let her go, Michelle. I just, this has been such uh, an enlightening experience, man. Ariel, you are giving out just this information. 
man, I just, again, I just want to go buy me some kids. I want to go borrow some kids. <laughs> I'm going to borrow some kids. And mm -hmm. use them makes money. So if I do <laughs> such an activity, what are three things, Ariel? Once I find me some kids, what are three things I can do today to get them started on the road to entrepreneurship? So the first thing I would tell you to do is to sit oh. down with your kid and come up with an idea and then um, name that idea, like come up with a catchy name for it. And then the second thing I would do is tell you to complete a business plan. And part of that business plan is them doing some research. If you don't do it, let the kid do it. And then the third thing that I would tell you is to open up a savings account because through this whole process, we want to make sure that they understand what to do with money. We want to make sure that as they make the money, they understand that some of this money needs to take care of me in my future. So I need to put some of this away. So those are the tips that I would tell you to do with the child, but also tips for you as a mom or a person that's parenting a child entrepreneur because we got to take care of ourselves too. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is take care of yourself. You can't pour into them if you're empty. The second thing I'll tell you to do is to just make sure that you stay their parent first because there's going to be so many people pulling on your child entrepreneur and want them there, here, and everywhere, and you want to make sure that you're protecting your child so you're always the parent first. And then the last thing is finding a tribe of people who um, are doing the same thing that you're doing because then you can have somebody to go and bounce ideas off of when it comes to having a young entrepreneur. A tribe like Young Biz Kids and the Young Biz Kids Parents and Community. So tell them real quick, Ariel, where do they go to find out more about the program? And I know you guys are giving away a free youth entrepreneurship kit. How do they get that as well? Yeah, so to find out more about the program, you're best to go to Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, and it's Young Biz Kids and that's Kids with the Z. And then we also have a website, youngbizkids.org where you can download your free entrepreneurial kit. And it has things in there like terms that kids should know when you're talking business. And then you also, well, business or entrepreneurship, terms that uh, your kids should know, a business plan, and then also uh, kid-friendly businesses. So if your kid doesn't know where to start, it'll help them figure out other things that they can do. And the last thing I will say about all of this in the journey It'll help you nail down what your child wants to do because not all kids join entrepreneurship to make money. They might have a community, something within a community that they would like to see change that won't make them money, but it'll also give them experience in entrepreneurship. It's just not making money, but they're doing something good that feels good on the inside of them. So I believe that kids should do whatever their hearts tell them, whether it makes money or not, in the entrepreneurial phase. So that you can see what's on the inside of them for if they like, would they like marketing? Will they like um, just brainstorming and strategic planning? Will they like organizing? Will they like you find those things out as you let the kids do these different entrepreneurial endeavors? So mm -hmm. I believe whether it makes money or not, if they're saying that they want to do something, allow them that time to do it and make sure they complete it to the end and then do a recap with them and let them know, hey, what did you think about this? What did you like? What did you like? What would you do different next time? And then it'll help you to understand your child more on what their strengths and what their weaknesses are. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, Ariel, this is so fun. It's always a pleasure working with you and the young kids. Uh, you are doing an amazing work in the community. Uh, that social entrepreneur game, you got it on lock because you're definitely making an impact. So that's Ariel Bivens Biggs. Uh, you're checking out the first ever episode of St. Louis Hustle. When we come back, we're going to get right into your responses to the question of the day. Be right back.